Hi, today we're looking at the DMX controller PCBs for these RGB touch controllers once again, and I've pretty much finished the firmware, so I'm really happy with the functionality now, I think it's pretty much there. But when I came to assemble one of the units, I noticed a problem. So this sits in the chassis so that you have the terminal blocks accessible from the rear side like this. But once you've inserted it, it won't actually sit home. And what I've done is I've measured up slightly incorrectly. So if you have a look at the original PCB, you can see there's quite a lot more clearance between these terminal blocks and these components here. And I've got very little gap and what's actually happening is the capacitor in particular is fouling on this little baffle here. Also, credit to Ian Scott Johnston, I did select the wrong part here for the DC to DC converter. If we have a look at the datasheet, what we can see is that I mistakenly selected the TPS54202 H. And that H means that that enable pin, which if we have a look closely, this is the enable pin, float the enable pin to disable. So that was my problem, and that's exactly um, why it wasn't working. Now the fix that they suggest on this one, because they've got a slightly different arrangement here, you can see they've got a Zener diode clamp here. So in their example diagram, all you actually need to do is have a 510k pull-up resistor. So no need to clamp the voltage specifically, so long as you're not dissipating loads of power in that Zener diode that they've got on this enable pin, then it's fine. And this is what I actually did originally. I had this resistor up here, but I noticed it was floating up near 6 volts, and I thought it was a little bit close to the 7 volt limit. So what I did is had that divider and actually clamped it with an LED. So we can say goodbye to this one, and hello to the new one. Very slightly different. You can see now that we've got that extra gap between the terminal blocks and these components up here. What I ended up having to do is just shift all the components up very slightly so you can see by side by side, uh, basically the microcontroller just got shifted up slightly along with all of the other components. But now you can see if we slide this into the chassis, it fits really nicely. And at the back panel, you've got clear access to these terminals. You can't actually see the LEDs for status unless you look through the holes, but I think that's fine. Um, that's more for debugging purposes anyway, and if you can see some kind of glow, you know that it's outputting stuff on the UART and everything's working. So this was ordered last week just after the video after I spotted Ian's comment, and this has arrived already. This is using JLC PCB's new delivery option, so they've added two onto there. So there's DHL Express DDP and the Euro Packet delivery. So the DHL Express DDP is the delivery duty paid and basically it pays all of the fees in advance and that means you don't have to pay that really annoying DHL administration fee of £12. The Euro packet is slightly different, that gets shipped to Europe first and then DHL from Europe to your address so then you don't have to pay any duty within the EU. So those are two new options that they've got on the JLC PCB website which is really helpful uh, because I know that those fees are quite frustrating for a lot of people. So this literally arrived today, and I thought we'd go on the journey of testing it. So I'll just power it up. And we've got no smoke. It's drawing about 16 milliamps, and we have 24 volts on the input. And hopefully we should see our 5 volts on this side without all of that additional componentry. And there we go. 5.088 volts, so that seems to be working properly. Let's put the firmware on here. And we've got some data being transmitted here. So that seems to be working. Let's connect up the touch panel and some lights. And the nice thing here is we can still program this PCB once we've assembled the PCB into the chassis because the header is still available here. So we'll just finish screwing that in. And it should snap together. There we go. So that was the termination resistors that I've just enabled with these little tabs on the two pin header. That's because these differential buses need 120 ohm termination at each end to stop any reflections of the signal along the cable length interfering with the actual data. So we've connected up just one light bar at the moment and if we power it up we saw a little blink as it powers up and the software starts up. 
but now it should be fully working. So when you first turn it on from power up, it just goes to a nominal low level white so that if there was a power cut or something, the next time you turn it on you weren't blinded by the lights. We have got a white which is a bit brighter. The red levels on white had to be turned down a little bit. Normally it's the green or the blue that washes out, but the colour was coming out pink. So turning down the red level slightly has given quite a nice white. We've got the RGB mode and the LEDs are working. And also, to those who spotted it, yes, it was a simple bitmap for those LEDs. So if you have all three of those bits set, then all three LEDs come on. So well done for spotting that. So it's in RGB mode and we can pick any colour on the colour wheel and that all works quite nicely. We've got the global brightness using the dimmer and then we've got some colour fading modes. So here we've got eight of these modules connected together and the way that these work, unlike most DMX fixtures, you can't actually set the address on these. So the first device in the chain has the address 1, 2 and 3. And in fact, each of them are configured so that any channel 1 on the input always controls the red channel. However, these are daisy chained and within each light fixture is some electronics to control the LEDs, but they also shift the DMX addresses as it passes through by three addresses, which means that you can address each light bar individually. So we've got channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. You can connect them all in turn. What it does mean is if you wanted to have other styles of fixture on the same bus, that won't actually work. You'll have to have it on a separate universe. Now, on here we've got speed control, so you can get some really nice slow fading effects. But we'll speed it up just for the sake of the uh, video. If you press the mode button, it then does the colour fading in the reverse direction. We've got another mode where there's always a basic level of white and we've just got a slight fading on top of that. And then after that, we've got colour changing with a phase change between each fixture. And when these are all lined up in a linear fashion, you get a really nice rainbow effect across the wall or whatever you're trying to light up. And each time we press the mode button, it increases the phase change between each light fixture. Now having had a look with eight connected together, we're already cycling through um, within that eight. So the phase difference between each button press on the mode might be too extreme. I might need to decrease that. But that's the general functionality of the program that we've got running on here. So I'm really quite pleased how this has turned out. I'm particularly happy with the way that it fits into the original chassis with no modification, so it uses all the original mounting points and everything. So that just means that um, you know I can buy as many of these as I want. They're relatively low cost. I think they're about $10 each from Banggood. And the electronics themselves also was very cheap in terms of what it's actually doing. So using the PCB assembly service, these PCBs actually come in about £7 each, which I think is incredible value for what you've got on there. So yeah, I'm really quite happy with how this has turned out and this is now much more suited to my needs. We can have these wherever we want them and indeed it can control any standard DMX fixture so we could have some outside or whatever and make things look really nice. I'm going to upload all of the details to the website so I'll put a link just here and if you're interested you can download the firmware, download the PCB files and build one for yourself. So thank you to JLC PCB for providing the PCBs. Hope you found the video interesting. We've got new topics next week. And until next time, thanks for watching.